welcome back to the channel and another falconry video so can you fly falconry birds at weekends only sounds like someone's chopping down a tree let's discuss if that really is a possibility okay there's two aspects to this um, i'm actually talking about can you fly falconry birds at weekends only or once or twice a week only um but the other aspect is, can you go hunting at weekends only? Can you have a, a weekend only falconry bird for falconry for hunting? <clears throat> that you can. So let's look at that aspect first. Because there's a lot of people, and again, the Harris's Hawk, bless it, is kind of, it's, it's responsible for so much good and so much bad within falconry. The Harris Hawk, because of its nature, once well manned and well trained, is a bird you can pick up and put down from the point of view of its anxieties and its man state. So a Harris Hawk on a perch uh, in your garden, somewhere where you're gonna see it regularly, if you don't handle that bird, even for feeding all week, it will still be perfectly tractable and psychologically normal at weekends with you. Whereas before that, it was very difficult to have a falconry, certainly a short wing hawk, a goshawk or anything like that, that would even a red tail, red tail's a bit better, but that, that would be able to be just left alone and still have perfect manners and a perfect man temperament with you, even if you hadn't done anything with it for days. The Harris Hawk has really changed that. So people really do think, well, you know, it's my pet Harris Hawk and I'll fly it at the weekends for hunting. That's very different. So let's look at, let's look at the realistic way of hunting at weekends only with your bird of prey. I guess with falcons themselves, there's a, there's an innate there's there's an opportunity to do this, but we're certainly struggling there. But with short wings and broad wings, if you have the drive and the determination to exercise those birds somehow during the week, even though you're working nine till five, it's dark all the time in your weekdays. You can't do any work at all in daylight with your birds, but you can be bothered to either, as, and it, this is so boring, get a tall step ladder, spotlight your patio or your lawn. If it's on a patio, put a cushion, a cushion thing down, a bit of AstroTurf or something, and just literally do jump ups up and down, up and down to tiny betchins. You can start off by chucking a bit on the floor. The bird will fly down, always on a creance, always on a creance, and then hold your glove up high, top of the step ladder, don't fall off and hurt yourself. The bird will fly up and down up and down 50 times if you've got the drive to do that four nights a week and then go hunting have a day off maybe and then go hunting saturday and sunday yeah you can practice a fairly decent falconry the difficulty there is you not being bothered when you come home from work you do that fatal thing of sit down with a cup of tea that's it you're not going to go and do that cold and horrible outside but if you can do that, or another opportunity, an example is maybe you take your bird hunting three times during the week. Good vigorous chasing on a lamp at night. If you learn how to do that properly and well, your bird's going to stay fit for those weekend falconry sessions because it's been chasing stuff all through the week and even honing its skills, of course. Either one of those two options why not mix them together will enable you to go out on your own or with your friends hunting with your falconry birds at the weekend and those birds will be capable of putting fine effort incredible fitness if you put the time in and quite some style and prowess certainly that's one of the best ways if not the only way to properly fly weekend falconry birds exercise them hard in the dark of evening whether by lamp light on your patio doing jump ups or hunting on the lamp that is possible but let's look at can you actually fly and hunt with a falconry bird just at the weekends if you said to me dave i want to be a falconer i can only go out at the weekends i've got loads of land loads of quarry and game for the bird to chase but i can't do anything with that bird until saturday morning into sunday can i be a falconer is it worth it I would say, don't even bother. You're a dabbler at, at worst. You're gonna have an incredibly unfit bird offering very poor sport at best. You're not gonna enjoy your falconry. You're just gonna, what are you gonna do with that bird in the week? At best, you might weigh it and feed it judiciously so it's on weight. And then of course, you really wanna be feeding it up 
so it's not keen all week long doing nothing at all because that bird will for sure turn into something of a screamer as soon as it hears or sees your presence in the evening when you finish work it'll start calling it's sat there bored two tears all day long with an empty tummy the only thing that happens in its life that's good is you going to feed it in the evening it will start calling 90 percent of the time doesn't matter how good a parent reared bird that was by the breeder you're gonna cause that bird to start it's calling goshawk red tail especially harris's hawk more than likely Worse still, that bird sat. What athletes do you know, any kind, that are couch potatoes five days a week and then put in top level athletics, whether it's football, gymnastics, anything. It's just not gonna happen. Why do you think an animal is any different to you in that respect? It's not gonna happen. It will fly, it will chase stuff. A Harris hawk following on through the trees, hopping from tree to tree, falling on something that's hidden below if that's the full career you want and that's good enough for you and you look after your bird and you're happy with that you might be okay just doing that at weekends but in general you're never going to understand any idea not a glimmer of real falconry and what those birds in pursuit offer the thrill of the chase if you're happy to have your harris hawk bumbling along dropping on stuff really easy stuff because it can't sustain a 150 meter chase flat out um, and, and really put on a show or you've or you've got to you know stand on a warren as you drop a ferret down and hope the hawk catches it almost as the rabbits come out and you're happy with that that's that's great isn't it that's fine the bird's happy and healthy and you're happy with that it's not real falconry falconry is about style and panache it's about seeing birds at the top of their game and it's actually about you striving forever to make that bird the perfect hawk and of course it never can be but the, the mountain climbing is in that pursuit of the very best of flights not muggings and things like that so realistically on the whole a weekend falconry bird with no input through the week generally is a waste of time or close to it but on the flip side of that the thing that actually started me off on this video um, was something kind of quite unexpected. Now, I've been flying Zeus the Golden Eagle, just finished his ninth season, um, and every summer, as he's molted from sort of March onwards to September, October time, he's been in a muse during the night, and for the most part, he spent the days on a swing perch, where he does a bit of exercise, but once they get the balance of a swing perch, doesn't matter what they do, it stays absolutely still. Their balance is amazing. Now and again, he might bait and pull himself back up, fly back up onto the perch, you know, building a bit of muscle there. But because golden eagles, if, if conditioned correctly, just like a Harris hawk, red tail, not so much a goshawk, it's not in their nature, but a, a golden eagle that's chilled out might move. It's, it's, that's what they do, they don't move, they're a typical bird of prey. They don't move at all if they don't need to. So a, a, a golden eagle at fat weight, chilling out on a swing perch, is hardly moving its wing muscles at all. So every beginning of October, when I've come to get that guy fit, I've had to put in an inordinate amount of work to get those massive wings and those huge muscles back to a level of fitness where it's even worth going out hunting. And all the time in between hunting sessions, rope work, lure work, just keeping that bird fit. It's much harder than you can imagine to keep golden eagles at the top of their game. Their big muscles and big wings take a lot more effort and movement to really stay there, that cardio fitness. And it's, and it's been tough. So. If that bird after the molt would have been flown at weekends, honestly, this, this is how ludicrous. He couldn't fly at the beginning of any season. He couldn't fly 50 metres on his rope, dragging his rope line. Now, we're not talking a heavy weight rope line, just a bit of drag on the grass. He couldn't do it, ever. We had to build it up until he was powerful and, and pulling along. Something's changed because I've been keeping him very differently. The last two molts he spent on his running line quite a few meters of running line where he's tethered to a steel cable via a ring that slides up and down the cable i'm going to put a link in the description to the video about that because there's one important thing i don't want you to keep your birds on a running line not because i want some weird advantage it has so many inherent dangers that could cripple or kill your bird they're just not not a, not a setup that anyone could recommend to someone else I've got it right with Zeus, he's got it right in here, but make sure you watch that video 
because it will really hopefully i can't remember but i'm pretty sure go over the pros and the cons and the cons far outweigh any pros but because it's worked for zeus and it's worked for me kyle flew zeus the season before the one just gone and what we couldn't believe was because he now can fly up and down i don't know 40 meters i'm not sure i haven't measured it actually maybe 30 meters but he's flying up and down properly flying with those wings he started the season with with so much more fitness you can't believe so kyle still put a lot of time in last season to get that guy fit on that running line um uh, rather on the rope line as well but he came out much fitter than he ever has done this season i did an initial bit of rope work purely to make sure we've got the recall and the response especially because kyle worked with him all last season i wanted to make sure zeus and i still had that bond but very minimal rope work literally just yeah he's he's on weight and he's keen to come when i call him let's go hunting i never did any more exercise with that golden eagle at all and i was only getting out a couple of times a week hunting with that bird and now i can tell you flying a golden eagle out of the hood at hares they don't actually get a lot of exercise. You've got to find the hairs. Otherwise, you're just carrying a fat lump around. They're not following on or having multiple slips at bolted rabbits like maybe a goshawk would back and forth. Lots of slips where they kill and, and, and get their feet up. And yet, he stayed to a highish level of fitness. Not his supreme level of fitness, but a more than worthy falconry bird with no fitness work at all, flying for hunting, literally a couple of times a week and then if you follow the channel you know he pulled a talent off and then he had from just just for the january time several weeks again with no work at all bumped up in weight until the foot had healed over and i took him out on the last day of the season he had a couple of slips and took took his game so it is there are those weird birds those weird birds that will work in a way in this case on a running line and I have got, of all the things believable, I'm flying a golden eagle as a purely weekend full company bird. How ludicrous is that? Putting in a more than worthy and respectable show. The only other bird that I've seen that's capable of flying when it's really unfit and has no, no meaning to and doing supreme flights is Zara Kyle's Harris's hook. And it's purely with that bird. It's because this overrides anything her body should be able to do that bird will put on ridiculous slips at hairs even when it's got no level of fitness at all because its prey drive is insane very few birds will let, allow their mind to carry their body to that extreme that it's actually putting on a really good display of falconry but for sure normally i'd say if you want to be a weekend falconer with no input in a week, just don't bother. Find yourself a hobby, a hobby with kit. Fast motorbikes used to be good. Get track days with those, they're still okay. The roads now is difficult. Fishing, golf, something like that. Shooting, something that you can do at the weekends, but the kit doesn't care how long it sits around. Falker is not a hobby. If you want to take up Falker as a hobby, just don't. Just don't. It's not fair on the bird and you'll regret it and you'll stop doing it. Falker is a passion. So if you're going to fly at the weekends, you've got to have the passion to put time into those birds all through the week somehow. If you want to fly at weekends only, don't copy me. It's a bad idea. It's just worked so well for me. I've been very, very lucky. But generally, if it's weekends are the only time you've got, just don't bother. I hope you've enjoyed this slight insight. Check out the other video. Keep on top of the channel. Click like and subscribe. If you want to click on that bell notification so you don't miss anything, don't forget it's a three-part channel. We've got the vlogs covering everything. We've got the reptile side of things and we've got the falconry side of things. I hope you're enjoying it. And I hope that little chat was just, I hope it's going to put some people off for sure that are thinking about it. Just don't bother. It, honestly, you won't enjoy it if you try and do it just at weekends. But also give some of you, some of you at the, maybe a little bit higher up the ladder, a bit more top of your game, where your circumstances might have changed and you might be thinking, oh, I'm going to have to chuck it all in, something's happened in my life. You might, you might. There's a 4% there's a chance you might be able to get away, work around somehow and still produce exciting flights. Only flying the birds a couple of days a week. Incredibly difficult, incredibly unlikely and rare. 
let it mull around in your head and I'll see you guys in the next one.